I mean, in that case, he's sorry. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Crew, Crew, Crew Trime. Trime. Crew Trime. Crew Trime. If you are new here, hi. My name is Sarah and what I do here is tell you a terrible story to ruin your day and put on my makeup at the same time. So if that sounds like fun to you, you are in the right place. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification, and then you will never miss one of my terrible stories. It is fully winter. It's nine degrees outside. <laughs> oh yeah, nine degrees. It's a little chilly in the basement, so I'm bundled. And if you can hear the heater, too bad. Okay, it's cold outside. So we are continuing our terrible tour of the United States where I try to find a story from every state in the United States. And today's story takes us to the very first state to ban alcohol during prohibition. Talk about the fun police. It's also the state that produces America's supply of toothpicks, blueberries, and lobsters. We're talking about the birthplace of the king of horror. This machine just called me an asshole. It's Maine. And this is the story of Christian Nielsen. Uh, I need to secure my bangs. <laughs> what a beautiful smile. Also, I'm sure you guys have noticed the background. I decided to switch it up just a little bit, you know. One more little housekeeping note. I don't really talk about the makeup products that I'm using in the video as I'm using them, but everything is linked down in the description box. So just click down here where it says more you can open up the description box, you go down, you find the product, click on it, and then it'll take you to like the full description if you're interested in learning more about it or if you wanna buy it yourself, either way. <laughs> also, if what I'm actually using isn't available anymore because it's old or discontinued or whatever, I will link something that's very similar just because I like you. Let's get started. On the western border of Maine, there's a super tiny town called Newry. The population of people that live there full time is like 325 people. It's tiny. It's like a ski town, you know, very seasonal. So it's where the Sunday River Ski Resort is, and it's actually one of the biggest and most visited resorts in all of Maine. So sometime in 2004, 63 year old Julie Bullard moved from California to New Remain, seeking a quieter life. She had previously owned the Church Street Bed and Breakfast in San Francisco. So Julie bought the Black Bear Bed and Breakfast. It's a seven room farmhouse that was converted to be, you know, a B&B. &B. For simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna call it the bear. Bye. <laughs> so Julie's 30 year old daughter, Selby, also moved to Maine as well. So Selby's husband had died in a car accident and she was raising their two young kids, Layla and Elliot. At first, Selby was helping out at the bear, but then she later got into real estate. So in the non-skiing season, the bear wasn't really doing a lot of business for like tourists, you know? So Julie started renting out rooms to boarders. The residents included 50 year old Jimmy Whitehurst who also did maintenance at the bear and 31 year old line cook, Christian Nielsen. So on September 1st, 2006, Christian invited Jimmy to go fishing. He told Jimmy that they could go to his family's private fishing camp in Upton. So Upton is about 15 minutes away from Newry. It's like the next town up. And Jimmy loved fishing, so he said sure. When they got halfway to the secluded area, you know, basically they went deep into the woods. They sat down and had some lunch. They had brought some sandwiches with them. Then Christian bummed a smoke from Jimmy. They sat there, smoked the cigarettes. And then Christian said that he needed to take a leak. So he got up and walked behind Jimmy you know, like he was gonna go into the woods, but instead he turned around and pulled out a 38 caliber pistol from his waistband and shot Jimmy in the back of the head. When Jimmy fell forward, Christian shot him two more times in the head to make sure. After that, Christian dragged him deeper into the woods to a spot that he wanted to bury him in, and then he just kind of left it there. He needed to get going to his evening shift at the Sudbury Inn, so he decided that he would just come back later. I mean, like, what is going on? What happened? Why did Christian shoot Jimmy? Who is Christian? 
I'm glad you asked. So Christian Charles Nielsen was born on May 2nd, 1975 to Charles and Patricia Nielsen. When he was only four years old, his parents divorced and there was like a brutal custody situation over Christian and his sister. The judge actually ruled that six-year-old Christian and his sister would live full-time with his father not his mother. The court documents say that his mother's behavior wasn't consistent with the emotional stability that is most valuable to young, impressionable children. Apparently, Patricia had a new man in her life, a man named Michael Lewitt, who had a criminal background that the court found undesirable. Well, she married him anyway. And the custody battles over the children continued for years. Also, a therapist that was involved had made determinations, I guess, that the kids should live with Charles based on her opinion, I guess, of Charles' new wife, a lady that he ended up divorcing anyways, and then he remarried. At any rate, Charles was a high school English teacher and things at home were pretty stable. There wasn't any abuse in the home. There wasn't anything crazy going on. The stepmother wasn't a step monster. Everything was fine. Christian was described as, you know, a quiet, nice kid. He listened to grunge music and went skateboarding. After Christian graduated from high school, he went off to college to study English just like his dad. It didn't last long. He ended up dropping out of college and then he kind of drifted aimlessly from job to job. He had worked at several places in Newry, but in 2006, he was working at the Sudbury Inn as a line cook and was living at the Bear. Um, I need to put on eyebrows and then I'll be right back. Okay. Where was I? Christian was working as a line cook at the Sudbury Inn. It's said in the research that he definitely had some issues with alcohol and over the years had gotten several DUIs and had lost his driver's license over it. He never had any trouble with the law or anything like that. So back to Christian takes Jimmy out into the woods to go fishing and then shoots him for no damn reason. And then uh, just kind of leaves him there and goes to work at the Sudbury Inn. He acted totally normal. Nobody noticed him being weird or anything different at all. When Christian got home to the bear after his shift at the Sudbury Inn, he originally had planned to go back to Upton to deal with Jimmy's body, but instead he just went to bed. So the next day he did go back to Upton and he dug a shallow grave to conceal Jimmy's body. Then he used an ax and a hacksaw to cut him up. He stuffed him down in the hole and then he poured gasoline over the body and lit a fire. After he was done, he just went on about his day. He went to a shift at the Sudbury Inn again and again, no one noticed him acting out of the ordinary. His co-workers, in fact, would later say that, you know, he was a nice, quiet, polite guy and he seemed fine. Like, what is happening? So after work, nice, calm, quiet Christian decided that he needed to kill someone else. He was gonna kill the owner of the bear, Julie Bullard. Maybe, perhaps, she had noticed that Jimmy wasn't around and, you know, like wondering where he went but it had only been like a day or so, so it's not like she was assembling search parties or anything. Christian maybe thought that she would suspect that he had something to do with it, maybe. Anyway, so when Christian woke up that Sunday morning, he wanted to kill Julie, but since she typically slept in late, he didn't really have a lot of time and he was annoyed at that. So he went to her bedroom door. She also lived at the bear and he tried to kick in the door, but it wouldn't budge. So then he put a shoulder into it and the door opened. Julie sat up in her bed and was like, what the hell? Reasonable. Then Christian drew down on her with that 38 caliber pistol and shot her three times. He would later say that it quote, blew her out of the bed and into the wall. And it was amazing. Christian then took her outside, cut her in half with an ax and a hacksaw, and then hid her body under a blue tarp. He then cleaned up Julie's bedroom and then went outside and shot and killed Julie's three dogs. <sighs> Monster. Am I more upset that he killed the dogs? No, but was it necessary? No, come on. So 
The next day, Monday, September 4th, 2006, was Labor Day, and Julie's daughter, Selby, was starting to worry because she hadn't been able to get in touch with her mom for two days at this point. And Julie actually had asthma, and Selby was worried that maybe, you know, her mom had had an asthma attack or something like that. Now, Selby actually had recently broken her leg, so she couldn't drive, but she did have a very good friend, 43-year-old Cynthia Beetson, who she met through work work and uh, she agreed to drive her over to the bear that day. So of course, Selby expected to see the boarders, Jimmy and Christian. Obviously, Jimmy wasn't around and Christian told her that he had not seen Julie. Well, Selby went into Julie's room to kind of look around and Cynthia just sort of stayed in the hallway talking to Christian. So Christian wasn't super worried about anything because he cleaned up, you know, the evidence, all of the blood evidence in the room. But when Selby went into Julie's room, she called out, Christian, did, did you kill my mom? I mean, was she, was she joking? Had she found some blood? Did she notice that that bedroom door was broken? So Christian and Cynthia walked down the hall towards Julie's room where Selby was, and Cynthia entered the room first. Well, Christian then pulled out his gun and shot Cynthia in the head. As she had barely fallen to the floor, then he drew on Selby and shot her as well. He dismembered their bodies with a hacksaw and a chainsaw this time. He also cut off their fingers and took their rings for himself. Then he took them outside and hid their bodies behind the bear. And then he cleaned up the room again. What is happening? What is the motivation? Why is he doing this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. We don't know. It gets weirder. You guys. Later that day, Christian called his father, Charles, and told him that he was running the bear while Julie was away, and then invited him and his stepmom, Lee, over for a visit. What? Okay, so Charles and his wife, Lee, arrived at the bear around 5.30 p.m., pretty much immediately found a trail of what appeared to be fresh blood in the grass. Charles told Lee to immediately call the police, and then Charles followed the blood and discovered the dismembered bodies of 30-year-old Selby Bullard and 43-year-old Cynthia Beetson. When police arrived, Christian was actually sitting very calmly on a bench with his dad. State Trooper Dan Hansen was the first on the scene and he asked Christian, what's going on here? Christian looked at his name tag and said, well, I killed some people, Dan. I shot them all and the gun is in the house in the tool chest. Christian was arrested without any resistance and he actually confessed to everything. When asked when this happened, Christian just said, you know, yeah, a while ago. He did tell the trooper that, you know, he would be fine to talk to the police, but he wanted to tell the story only one time. So while waiting for detectives to arrive, Christian's father, Charles, told the trooper that Christian had confessed to him for a total of four murders, three people at the bear and one more in Upton. Remember, they've only found the two bodies at this point. Well, Trooper Hansen pretty quickly found the body of Julie Bullard. It wasn't far from the other two. And Christian had told him exactly where to look, of course. He also found the three dead dogs. Detective Jennifer King arrived, you know, shortly thereafter and arrested Christian officially. They gave him his Miranda rights on the scene. And again, when they got him down to the precinct to question him, he said that he understood his rights and he told them everything, including where to find Jimmy Whitehurst's body. And he described in detail everything about all of the killings. Now, when Detective King asked him why did he do this, he didn't like have an answer. There hadn't been an argument. There wasn't any kind of abuses going on, like nothing. He did say in that interview that he had been thinking about killing for like five years at that point, and he always wanted to be a serial killer. Well, regarding Jimmy's death, Christian said that he objected to his presence. For the others, he just wanted to. He didn't deny anything. He didn't try to make any excuses up. I mean, nothing. When I was reading this story, I kept trying to like get to the part where it explained why. There is no why. And I don't know what is like more unnerving. Like when somebody plots to like take revenge on people or when they just like for no damn reason, just kill another person and cut them up. No ma'am. 
No, ma'am. Later, Christian tried to say that he confessed everything before he was Mirandized, you know, which is baloney. The judge actually denied the motion that was made to suppress that confession. While in custody in the Cumberland County Jail, Christian started playing some fuck fuck games. He decided to plead not guilty, you know, by reason of insanity. He used a razor to cut an X in his forehead and he was like acting catatonic and having suicidal ideations. His lawyers tried to have him declared unfit mentally to stand trial. Also, this is fun, he went on a hunger strike. This guy, he, he wasn't a big guy, you know, he was pretty tall and skinny and he ended up losing like over 50 pounds. It was kind of dangerous. The sheriff's office actually petitioned the court to administer a feeding tube, which was actually approved. But upon learning this, Christian just started eating again, so. He was evaluated for mental competency and although psychologists diagnosed him with schizoid personality disorder and autism spectrum, he was ultimately determined to be competent for trial because his actions, the murders, were not um, committed in the middle of like some kind of psychotic episode. Perfectly chill. I mean, th the guy has no chill, but y you know what I'm saying. So just before jury selection was set to begin in October of 2007, Christian changed his mind and he dropped the insanity defense and pled guilty. To this day, he has still not been able to provide any kind of motive, but at his sentencing hearing, he said, I just wanna say that I'm sorry for what I did. He's sorry, oh, he's sorry, he's sorry, he's sorry. I mean, in that case, he's sorry. Christian Nielsen was handed down four concurrent life sentences without the possibility of parole, and he is currently incarcerated at the Maine State Prison in Warren, Maine. That's the story of Christian Nielsen. I feel like the story was like super short and fast, but you know, sometimes it bees like that. Again, if you are interested in any of the makeup that I used in today's Luke, just look down in the description box, click more, and it'll open it all up so you can see it. If you have a crew crime story that you would like to recommend to me, there's also a link to a Google Doc where you can fill in all the juicy details. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week, and you can follow me in some other places as well. That's it for now. I'll catch you next time in the next video. Bye. I keep saying Nelson. It's not Nelson, it's Nielsen. Nielsen. Oh, those are wonky, aren't they? And this is almost empty. Do I have another one? The vest is a little noisy, but oh well. Come on. Oh, I need eye drops. Shit. We are continuing. <clears throat> All right. Ready for winter.